see if you if you really look at the how this entire space has evolved traditionally lending has been collateral backed so you had to get into a bank and had to submit collaterals and we we've, we've heard numerous stories about how people had to put up collaterals worth around two times of the loan amount that they wanted or maybe even five times of of the loan amount that they wanted so the underwriting that has been followed by traditional lenders has by and large been collateral based so they underwrite the collateral rather than underwriting the business but over the years the entire landscape has evolved i mean businesses have changed the way businesses are being done and and the kind of assets that they hold they have also changed uh, and um, earlier when a person wanted to do business he would immediately get into his family and they were joint families they were running a family business and uh, they would pick up certain amount of collateral from the family assets and actually extend it to the bank for 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 that loan for the business but as things have evolved now banks uh, i mean most businesses i mean are being run my family businesses are being run by nuclear families and even the the bank of collaterals the collateral bank overall collateral bank with each respective uh, family i mean which has become nuclear has also got depleted as a result of which the collateral is no longer available so and now the banks and the lenders have now evolved into looking at the scenario in a fresh way and wherein they could do away with the, or obviate the need for putting up large amounts of collateral so that's how the things have panned and and you know digitization has been a key trigger and um, the way digitization has facilitated you know getting a lot of data with respect to gst with respect to um, even the past track record people have started adopting cash flow based kind of uh, lending people have adopted uh, uh, payment track record so things have evolved and you know where a lot of these surrogate data i mean alternate data is being used as a proxy to assess the capability of of uh, business to pay back the loans so i think this is how things have evolved so far i think it was a landmark kind of a decision uh, by the uh, government of uh, india i mean we've been we've been advocating the need for uh, introduction of surety bonds in the country for a long time i mean i'm talking about almost uh, i have been speaking about it for the last 4 to 5 years um mrs sita raman the honorable finance minister introduced the concept of sureties uh, being used instead of bank guarantees for public procurement and construction projects in the announcement in the gfr now what it says is i mean for all procurement contracts you could actually put up a surety bond or a bank guarantee so the msme now has the option of this thing so as an insurance company i mean insurance company need not actually look for collaterals because in a typical bank guarantee kind of a situation you would actually have to put up um, i i mean if you are a small uh, business you you have to put up almost about 130 140% of collateral and in in addition to that you also require to put up about 25 to 30% margin money so it really sucks out liquidity from from a business and it also that sucking out of liquidity from the business also impacts its is uh, execution capabilities because if the person doesn't have liquidity it's going to impact his uh, there's only so much that he can do to you know complete the project um uh, with this being introduced i think a lot of that need for collateral to support your bank guarantees or support your uh, support your surety bonds is now not required anymore so i think it's a big impetus to the entire msme sector and um, I also understand that uh, the necessary changes have come to the GFR norms as well, um, which facilitates, I mean, which enables people to, uh, you know, start uh, putting up surety bonds instead of uh, bank guarantees. So, if you really look at the surety space, I mean, the entire surety space in India is um, one is surety insurance, which only insurance companies are allowed to uh, offer. Uh, now they consist of custom bonds uh, the uh, contract bonds which is performance guarantees um, advance payment guarantees uh, you've got um, bid bonds performance guarantee bonds advance payment bonds retention bonds those are the things um, that is there which is with the insurance uh, companies we are a financial guarantee company so we do things like uh, rental guarantees which replaces the security deposit that the landlord uh, takes from the tenant we do things like residual value guarantees which which predicts the value of an asset at the end of a specific tenure we do credit default guarantees now which has been the topic of our discussion today where we partner with a lender and we participate in the risk of the loan going bad uh, along with the lender and and we also do things like uh, payment default guarantees and and advance payment guarantees right? 
Now, the idea is, you know, as a, as a surety company, I mean, we assess the credibility of a tenant, uh, uh, credibility of a of a of a business, uh, of a, of a borrower. And, uh, and then see how best we can customize our, our delivery with respect to his requirements. In terms of the size, uh, of, uh, size of the entire opportunity, I think uh, the entire gap in the MSME sector in terms of loans um, uh, our requirement is almost about 60 lakh crores. So, I mean, we can assume that's the size of the opportunity. In terms of the actual payment default guarantees and the advance payment guarantees, what we do, where we are looking at creating an ecosystem of credit assessed and, and underwritten uh, you know, businesses which can enable and, and facilitate uh, credit transactions between each one of them. I would reckon the entire size of that opportunity is almost three to four times of the amount of funds that they require. So I would put that close to about 200 lakh crores in, in terms of just payment default guarantees and advance payment guarantees which, which can be required in the MSME sector. So that's, that's the overall size that, that we are actually looking at as of now.